In this video, I want to show how we can fine tune the HDR lightning for a better result. So as I mentioned in one of the previous chapters, we can use HDRI maps for creating quick illumination setup. Um, however, I have a few issues with HDRIs. One of them is when we render an image, you can see we are getting this greenish tint on the ceiling and the bluish tint here on the floor and these come well from the map itself so if we look around in the viewport the bottom part is green because it was shot in nature the top is blue so it would be great if we could desaturate those values uh, second thing I have a problem with HDRIs is when we want to make the interior brighter, as you can see, we have some direct sun coming to our scene, but those corners are pretty dark. If we simply boost the strength of the map, well, the effect is somewhat visible, but perhaps I would like to have a little bit brighter background image as well. Maybe something happening uh, within the highlights and just by boosting strength, we are not able to have these results. So to actually achieve them, we can use some hacks within the world shader settings. And let me now show you how to do this. Let me enter the full screen mode. I'm gonna press Shift A, add a shader and choose the mix shader. Now I will duplicate the background reconnect our texture here and plug it here. So with this setup, nothing really changes, but if we add the light path node, we can actually tell Blender, well, use the values from this node to impact any of those uh, properties of the rendering. So let's say we want to increase the brightness of the background image. If we increase the energy of this node to four, this enhanced node will only affect the camera. So let's now go, go back to the viewport and see the results. You can see the background image is now much brighter. If we increase the strength to 10, uh, those changes only affect what we have selected here within the light path node. So with the brighter background, we can maybe add some more light to our scene. Let's go full screen again. And we have to create another mix shader node. And now mix this input and this setup with the new background node. So let's reconnect it to the texture. Let's plug it in here and let's now decide which property we want to use as this input. So I will use the diffuse ray and what diffuse ray does, it actually affects the uh, values of light bounced around the scene. So you can actually see the results already because we copied the node with the value of five. If I increase this to 20, just as an example, you can now see our scene becomes much, much brighter, but the reflections within the objects, they basically stay the same. So if I reduce the value to one, um, you can see the objects also get darker, but I'm talking about those reflection highlights you can see, let's say in this area. So let's use value of 10. And now you can see those highlights are still the same. Um, this is a pretty cool way if you want to have a very exact and very defined look of your uh, rendering output from the HDRI image. Uh, we can also influence the colors. So as I said, remove those uh, color tints from the ceiling and from the floor. In order to do that, all you have to do is actually adding the hue saturation node. So let's press shift A, choose color, now hue saturation, and we want to plug this node into the color a link between our HDRI map and the background node, which is influenced by the diffuse ray here. So if we move back to the viewport, 
and if we set saturation to zero just for the test, you can see our illumination now is totally uh, well washed out of any colors. So if we increase the strength to 10 here, we are getting this very bright interior uh, with no color coming from the exterior. So perhaps we can use the value of 0.5 just to have a little bit of this main tint. Let's reduce uh, the strength of diffuse to 7 and let's also influence the glossy reflections. So the drill with glossy reflections will be exactly the same. We are copying the mix shader. Uh, we are copying one of the background nodes. As you can see, the setup becomes more and more complex as we keep adding the properties. But if you're doing it step by step, you usually know how those nodes work. So let's now plug in the glossy ray uh, yeah, the glossy ray here to the fact input. And let's move back to the viewport. I'm going to press Ctrl B to zoom in on the highlights, but you can already see we have them much brighter than before. So the default value for them was one and you can see they don't look that interesting. So let's maybe increase it to five or four. And yeah, that's basically it. One final adjustment I like to apply to my HDRI map is the white balance, a setting you usually have in any photo camera and which is unfortunately not available in Blender by default. So let's set it up as well. To set up the white balance, I will start with adding the vector sorry, the converter and black body node. So we are able to set up the temperature using the values here. Let's use 7,500 as something neutral. And we would have to plug in somehow this color value, mix it with our main color value here. I'm going to temporarily reconnect this main background node with our output. So we are going to move back to our default HDRI look. Let's slightly move those nodes here. And I'm going to add color mix RGB node. Uh, the way to add this black body temperature values to the main color here is we have to drag and drop this node, change uh, the mix method here to multiply. Yeah, it's here. And now we are just plugging in the black body node and setting the fact value to one. So right now, if I change the value here to, let's say 4,000, you can see we are, we are still keeping our HDRI map as it is, but we are able to change its warmth uh, or temperature. So with the lower values, we are making the map warmer with higher like 9000 we can make it much cooler and yeah i think it's a pretty good result pretty interesting result in general if you want to affect the mood of your image uh the last step before we have this setup finished is reconnecting this uh, multiply node to all of those nodes we have here so let's do this uh, since we are desaturating, this has to go here and this has to go here. So let's see the result and let's maybe fine tune some of the settings once more. We have to reconnect first. I'm gonna decrease the defounds, uh, sorry, diffuse bounces slightly. Also the background image. So right now, if you would like to desaturate the background again, we can simply copy this node and we have to drag and drop it to this link. So you can see the background image is now fully desaturated. And yeah, let's now compare this result with our default HDRI input. So again, our default HDRI input and now exactly the same HDRI map, but with our fine tuning applied. So 
I think the result is quite uh, visible. We got much brighter interior. Uh, we are able to control the colors that are cast by the HDRI map. Uh, the highlights are much visible. I'm maybe not super happy with the white balance, but again, we can change that super quickly just with this one note. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, remember, you can download the setup under it in the course description. And yeah, happy blending. Thank you guys for watching. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which you can watch for free on YouTube. All the necessary details and link to the full playlist can be found in the video description. If you want to support what I do and access all of the 3D files used in this course, plus Blender ready interior setups and over 2000 Blender exclusive 3D models, just visit the Chocofur store and learn more about our subscription plans. Again, thanks for watching and I see you soon.